What's up everybody? Caleb Rundell here and this is your study video for Acts chapter 23. Chapter 22 ended with Paul and the Jewish council council in this terse meeting before the Rib Roman tribune who is in charge of security in Jerusalem. And here in chapter 23 we see how this meeting plays out. In verses 1 through 5 there is a tense exchange between Paul and Ananias the high priest. Now, in this exchange, and the text details it pretty well, Paul says, oh, well, if I knew he was the high priest, I wouldn't have said those things. Now, I have to question here if Paul is being serious, because A, surely Paul would know who the high priest is, and also the high priest would be pretty easy to recognize. They would have things that they would wear, probably, that would signify, hey, this is this is a one of one situation. This is the high priest of which there is one, and it's this person. They would probably have some sort of distinctive garment or headgear or ornament or jewelry or something. So it's hard to think that Paul doesn't know that Ananias is indeed the high priest. And we may, he may be getting to something here. Because in verse 6, Paul knowingly sows dissension between the Sadducees and the Pharisees, bringing up the topic of resurrection. And the text explains this pretty well. Sadducees don't believe in any sort of soul. Or in, if there's no soul, there can be no resurrection. Pharisees did believe in those sorts of things. You also see this division come up in the Gospels whenever the Sadducees and Pharisees are mentioned. Paul, being a Pharisee, knows this, and so just kind of drops that bomb into the room, be like, oh, well, I am, you know, preaching this resurrection and the Sadducees are like, whoa, time out, you can't do that. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees get in a big old fight about it, okay? And out of that, some Pharisees then side with Paul. Now, this argument between the two groups becomes so bad within the council, it they kind of lose focus on while they're, what they're there about, which is Paul. And it gets out of control, and the Tribune sends soldiers to, re to retrieve Paul for his own safety. After this happens in verse 11, Paul has this edifying vision that after Jerusalem, he will go to Rome. And the things that set that trip to Rome, to Rome in motion are about to begin. In verses 12 through 15, there is note of a conspiracy to assassinate Paul. Now, the group that forms this con conspiracy is separate from the council, and we know that because they have to go to the council to tell them about it. Now, we don't get any reports that the council, you know, tries and tries to stop it, but it's a separate group from the council. Other than that, we don't know who these conspirators are, other than that there's a pretty good-sized group of them, and that they're going to assassinate Paul as he's in transit from the Roman barracks to the council. And the council has to play their part by asking for Paul to leave the protection of the Roman barracks. In verses 16 through 22, this plot is thankfully overheard and is then revealed to the tribune. After the tribune learns of the plot in verse 23, the tribune assembles this large military force of Roman soldiers to escort and take Paul out of Jerusalem to the tribune's boss, Governor Felix. Now, this tribune gets a name when we read this letter here, but unfortunately the tribune himself, Claudius, is unknown to history outside of what we read here in Acts. However, the Tribune's boss, Governor Felix, is well documented in secular Roman historians. And we know that Felix is the governor of Judea between the years 52 and 60. Now, in this letter, uh, Tribune Claudius basically says to Governor Felix, hey, this is above my pay grade. Like, this has gotten out of hand. This is now something that you need to handle. This has gone above, like, what I think I'm qualified or capable or paid to do as the guy who's just in charge of security in Jerusalem. Like, you need to handle this. Now, here is a map of the places mentioned in 25 on the journey from Jerusalem to Caesarea. Google Maps says this would take about a 25-hour walk. So, um, you know, day, day and a half. And they're on horseback, too, we hear. Paul and his cavalry escort. Okay. Now, once Paul gets to Felix, Felix, Felix asks, where are you from? And Paul names the province around Tarsus, Sicilia. Um, 
am just saying, hey, I'm not from here, but this is where I'm from using the Roman terminology. This is my home process, province. After that, Paul is kept in the barracks. In some translations, it may say that this barracks is called Herod's headquarters. And that's because the original Herod from Christmas, Herod the Great, uh, is called Herod the Great because he did all these public works, the temple in Jerusalem. And one of the main one was to build up Caesarea as a Roman city and a seaport from which to govern the province of Judea. And that's, of course, where the governor normally resides. And so this particular barracks where Paul is being kept is known as Herod's headquarters. For some reason, we don't have the full history around that. So that's where chapter 23 ends. We'll see what continues with the story in chapter 24 as Paul continues uh, this kind of conversation and trial with the Jewish authorities and we'll eventually see him head to Rome. Check in for the next video on chapter 24.